Hello, this is State Representative Rob Martwick, and uh, today is July 30th, 2018, and uh, we're on summer break. Uh, we are not in Springfield right now. Uh, we passed a budget this year, so we actually have, uh, we're not back in the summer talking about the budget. The budget has been passed. We're just waiting for the governor to review the bills, to sign which bills he's going to sign, and which one he's going to veto, and then we'll go back in November. Um, but nonetheless, I wanted to continue on with my video series uh, that I call Straight Talk Common Sense Solutions, where I try to give you sort of a factual explanation of what government is. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on it. And of course, uh, you're welcome to develop your own thoughts and, and disagree with me or, or, or ask questions as it were. So um, today I wanted to talk about uh, something that's on everybody's mind, um, and that's property taxes. The city of Chicago is being reassessed for 2018. And many people, especially here in my district, saw rather large increases in their assessment. And so what I wanted to do was help you understand how the property tax system works, how your assessment is sort of figured out without giving too much of the details because I don't know the details of exactly how your assessment is determined, but how assessments are determined, what their function is, and hopefully help you understand whether or not you should do something about your assessment. So with that, let's begin, okay? Um, so I'm calling this video series Property Tax Assessments 101. This is basic. There's going to be a lot more here. Um, if needed, I'll follow up with future videos to explain them, but this should give you sort of a nuts and bolts explanation. So let's start out talking about what the difference is between income taxes and property taxes, because even though they're both a way of collecting taxes, they function very differently. And you notice I've, I've done a one and a two here. And, so let's talk about income taxes. Income taxes, what we do is we set the rate. As many of you know, we set the rate at 4.95% in Illinois. Well, how much do we collect? Well, that's step two. We don't know, right? We can estimate, but until the taxes are collected later in the year, we won't find out exactly how much we collect. But that's the way income taxes work. So when we do our budget, we do a projection of revenues that we will collect, but we don't know it could be more, it could be less. Property taxes work very different. What the government does, and this is your local government, this is the city of Chicago, county of Cook, CPS, or whatever your local school district is, water reclamation district, forest preserves, etc. right? What they do is they figure out what's the amount we need to run the government, number, step number one, and then set number two, then they set the rate so that they collect exactly what they're supposed to collect in order to run the government. So income taxes, it's sort of a guess, and you see what you collect. Property taxes, you figure out what you need, and then you set the rates to collect that much. So where do assessments come in? So let me dispel the first myth. Your assessment is not equal to your taxes. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Assessments or your property taxes are a function of, of something else. I'm sort of skipping ahead here. It's your taxes, the dollar amount of taxes that you collect, is equal to the value of your property times whatever the tax rate is, okay? And so that's where value comes in. We have this system called ad valorem, right? That means that we are going to tax you based on your value. Again, not a one-to-one -one relationship because we have value times rate. But what the assessments serve to do is to determine, remember, we already know how much money we need to run the government. The assessments determine what your share of the burden will be. So the more valuable your property, the more you pay for those services that you get for local government. Whether you use them or not is irrelevant. It's how, that's how much you pay. So the more valuable your piece of property, be it a home or a business, then you will pay a higher tax than a person who has a less valuable piece of property. That is ad valorem. So, so the, 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 pro, the, the process of assessments is to determine how much of that amount needed we all individually have to pay okay, on our property tax bill. So I want to give a little bit of an example here because to show you uh, how property taxes work. And that's going to be this thing that I have here off to the side. And I'm going to make it simple, right, because we live in a very big city, a very big county. There's 1.3 million parcels of property in Cook County. Um, it would be too hard to explain the intricacies of how that works. It, it, 
But, but let's start with a simple example that will help give you some understanding. Let's assume we live on an island, and there's only four homes on that island, okay? And let's assume that all of those homes, despite my drawings, let's presume that they're all identical homes, okay? They all live on the island, they're all identical homes, and they're identical in value, all right? And let's assume that our island government needs $40,000 a year to operate. Well, I don't even have to go through the rest of this for you to understand that if you have four identical homes and you're spreading the bill out over of $40,000, everybody's going to pay $10,000, okay? And that's true, but let's say for sake of argument that the assessor has valued the property on our island, all of our homes are worth $500,000 which gives us an assessed value, and you can see this on your property tax assessment notice, your assessed value is 10% of your fair market value. That's if you live in Cook County. If you're watching this and you live in other parts of the state, it's a different calculation. But again, this is a basic understanding. So 10% of that would be $50,000 is your assessed value. Now we know that we need to collect $10,000 from each home. Well, you take 50000 or you take 10000 you divide it by 50000 and you get a rate of 20%. That's basically how it works. So, let me give you an example. And, and this, is, this illustration is important for what we're doing here. Let's assume now that instead of $500,000, that the assessor decides that he is going to raise the value of these homes to $1 million, Okay which means then our assessed value would be 100,000. And what that does is that changes our rate to now 10%. Why? Because we still need $40,000 to operate our government. And if you take $100,000 and you know that each house is gonna have to collect $10,000, well, it's 10% of it, right? By the same token, and I won't do the, the I won't change the board here, but if, if we lowered the value of the homes to two hundred and fifty thousand, well then the rate would go to forty percent, but we would still in all of those examples we'd be paying the exact same tax bill. So why is that important? Um, well, here on the northwest side of the city of Chicago, everyone, I should say most everyone, received a rather big increase. Now was that warranted or not? I, I don't know. I'm um, but we received a big increase. And so why is that notable? Well, remember, it's, it's value times rate, and if everybody's value goes up, that doesn't mean necessarily that your tax bill is going to go up. Now, there are other functions that go into this rate, the largest of which is how much does the government say that it needs? Well, we all know that Cook County has had financial problems, the city of Chicago has had financial problems, and so they might be asking for more money which means that will affect the calculation of the rate. It's just not a one-to-one -one relationship. So the important part of an assessed value, um, of course, ultimately is what's my tax bill going to be? We're all concerned about that. But the most important part is that it's you're fairly assessed. You're not over-assessed. Make sure that the assessor does not have you at a value that is in excess of what you should be taxed, right? The great thing about the property tax system is we do get to appeal if we feel we're incorrectly assessed. And again, the key here is fair. Am I fairly assessed, right? We're all going to have to pay taxes. We can't, the government is going to tell us how much they need. That's a different process. We can talk to our aldermen or our county commissioners and we can say, don't take as much or take more if you need to fix some problems. But the assessor is only going to assess what the value is. So should you appeal your value or not? Are you overassessed? And so I have two questions for you, okay? And, and this is what you should do. Pull out that notice of assessment that you got from the assessor. And on it, it will list what he says your fair market value is. Ask yourself, if you were suddenly relocated to another state and you had to sell your house, and you were going to sell that house, and you were going to accept a fair uh, value for it, a fair offer. Does the offer that the assessor's office, is it less than what you'd accept? Is it more than what you'd accept? Um, right? If, it, if, if the assessor says that your house is worth 475000 and you say, well, geez, I'd be lucky if I could get three fifty dollars for it, then you might be over-assessed. Uh, I will tell you, I spoke to someone who called me just the other day, 
And uh, they said, oh my God, our assessment went up way high. And I said, oh God, that's terrible. And I said, by the way, what's your assessment? And they said, $300,000. And they said, oh, wow. I said, if you had to sell it tomorrow, what would you accept? And they said, well, I wouldn't take a penny less than three fifty. Well, then you're underassessed. Uh, spoke to another friend who called me and said, should I do something about my property taxes? And I said, that depends. You should always be diligent, right? And I said, you know, you just bought your house about a year ago, didn't you? And he said, I did. And I said, how much did you pay for it? And he said, 475000 And I said, what's it assessed at? And he said, 425000 And I said, well, then I would guess you're probably not over-assessed. You're maybe somewhat under-assessed. Um, so that's a good first step, but that's not the only step of the process. Remember, the assessment is not going to be our final bill. It only determines whether or not our share of the burden is fair. But there's another thing, and that's called uniformity, right? And what uniformity says is that all properties that are similar in a similar area, right, in the same neighborhood or in the same area that are similar houses should be assessed at a similar value. Well, if you live in the city of Chicago, this is not tricky, especially here on the northwest side. We have a limited types of housing stock, and, and if you go neighborhood to neighborhood, sometimes they're almost identical, right? So if I come to Portage Park, which is just here south of my office, you find a lot of brick bungalows. So it's not too hard to compare one brick bungalow to the next. Um, now, again, it's not just one brick bungalow to the next. Uh, you can't do that because... You know, as we all know, some people have dormered their bungalows, and so they've added square footage, and the assessor is going to assess based on the average value per square foot. So what he does is he runs an analysis of all the sales of the homes, and for this instance, let's say Portage Park, but it could be Jefferson Park or Gladstone Park or wherever you are, and uh, he will take all of the same type of properties, the same that fall into the same classification, he will look at all the sales over the last three years, get an average sale per square foot, and then apply that to the property. Which is why if you buy your house for four seventy five, you could be assessed at four twenty five because the average hasn't caught up. Property tech, property values have gone up substantially here in the northwest side. And I know for a lot of people they say, well that's not fair about the house. I you know things haven't changed for me. But again, that's what an ad valorem property tax system is. Is it right, is it wrong, is it good, is it bad? And it, it, you know, that's a, that's a different debate. What I would tell you is that most states have ad valorem property taxes based on value. Um, they are reasonably uh, understandable, right? Because typically speaking, um, poor people don't live in mansions because they can't afford them, and rich people don't live in tiny little houses because they can afford to live in a big fancy house in a nicer neighborhood, right? And so if they live in a more valuable house, they pay more property taxes because they can afford it. And that's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way this system works. Um, so that's property taxes 101. Um, what I would suggest to you is this. There are a lot of ways that you can appeal your property taxes, but one of the easiest ways is to go to an assessor's outreach. So the Cook County Assessor will hold outreach seminars where you can go and they will actually help you appeal your taxes. The Board of Review does the same. Right now, if you live in Jefferson Township, you're going to want to appeal at the assessor, and that date is coming up fast. So go to cookcountyassessor.com, and right across the top, you will see Outreach. Click on that Outreach, it'll pull up a calendar, look for the Jefferson Township Appeals, and you can go to one of these seminars free of charge, and you can appeal your property taxes on site. It's a good service. If you're if you deserve a cut, there's a good chance that they will find it, and then you won't have to pay uh, an attorney or an accountant to do the appeal for you. It's a very effective way of doing it. So check that out. Um, you can also reach out to my office here. Now we we you can't see because we're zoomed in nice and tight, but we just moved. Things are kind of a mess here, um, but you can. Find us at 5618 West uh, Montrose Avenue, 5618 West Montrose. Our number is 773-286-1115. Uh, reach out, talk to Judy, um, and, and it, if, if you have questions, she'll get them to me, and we'll try and help you. That's what we do here, and uh, that's a little bit of a property tax, property assessments 101. So I hope that um, helps explain the property tax system. Remember, 
It's a lot bigger than my little island example. There are 1.3 million parcels of property in Cook County. And as you cross over into different districts and different rates and different property types and different values, that all moves. But it's not a one-to-one -one situation. Your property tax bill should not go up by 40% just because your assessment went up by 40%. You still have the ability to appeal, figure out if it makes sense for you. And if you do, reach out to the Cook County Assessor's Office. And so that's it for now. Uh, this is State Representative Robert Martwick. Thank you for watching. As always, please feel free to leave comments, complaints, or criticisms here, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching.